Good afternoon, and welcome to Night Talk. I'm Joe Murphy, and I'm joined for this afternoon's show by Mike Yakubik, and we have a guest with us. I'm going to let Michael introduce him, but let us begin as we always do with our prayer to St. Michael. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Michael, before I turn it over to you, I want to remind our listeners that Night Talk, now that we've had a change in schedule here at the station, when Night Talk airs, uh, it airs every Wednesday at 12.30 p.m., and it will have an encore presentation Sunday afternoon at 2 p.m. Michael. That way we can, uh, if, you, if you don't want to watch football, you can listen to us on Night Talk. There you go. <laughs> we have uh, Deputy Life Director, right? Deputy yes. Life Director. Yep, Dave I'm still there. And Dave's been on with us quite a few times. And as everybody knows, we're getting ready for the March for Life in uh, Harrisburg, being the capital of Pennsylvania. Um, before we get to that, Dave, I kind of wanted to mm-hmm. bring up Every once in a while, we used to do a show on pet peeves. Okay. And I guess during the uh, uh, this election cycle, I, I developed a new pet peeve. And I just wanted to kind of air it. And let just one? You, I'll tell you, <laughs> just one. Uh, well, it's actually two. It, it's it's two commercials. And mm-hmm. um, the one is uh, is uh, um, an, an old, not an older, not older come by us, but an older lady. And she's there touting the fact that... Uh, She's so happy. She's so upset that in the national, uh, our federal government does not allow since Roe v. Wade for abortions for everybody. Now her daughter won't have the ability to kill her child. And I, I think what bothers me about that, and and I and I hope to God she's a paid actress. I really do. Oh, they all are. Yeah. You know, because I would hate for that mo- that that woman's grandchild to see that down the road and say, my grandmother said it was all right for her daughter to kill me. And the other one that gets me is there are young girls on there and they're talking about how their right to kill their child is so important to them. And when I look at them, I think that's like a slap in the face to your mother yeah. that she allowed you to be born. It, it, and, I, and, you know, I'm not talking about political party here or anything. I'm sure. just talking about strictly those individuals that participated in that i just feel sorry for their souls i really do i it, it yeah. makes it feel weird yeah i i hear what you're saying i'm i'm reminded of long ago ronald reagan used to uh give the quip that everybody who was for abortion has already been born mm-hmm. and and he with with that one swoop statement he was nailing it and everybody who says oh i have a right to you know destroy my child's life well you're here you you've gotten to live your life you know you you've had all the benefits all the blessings and you can't give that to your own son or daughter that's coming up in the world i mean what what really scares me is the effect it's going to have on future generations we need to propagate humanity we we need to propagate the lord's people and Abortion is is a direct, like you said, it's a direct, literally, it's a direct slap in the face to that concept. And to just hear it said that way, oh, I, I'm not going to have the right to, you know, abort my baby. Well, you, you, sh- you should be thinking to yourself, maybe you don't. I mean, it, it's somebody else. There's somebody else there that has that right to have the life you had, all the blessings that you've had. And I'm hoping we can use that as our strategy is our pro-life strategy in the days and years ahead that you know you're not when you're pro-life you're not you're just you're going to have that moment where you just you're propagating humanity you're 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 giving that unborn child a chance to live their life as much as you have and i hope they see it that way someday and and i think your pet peeve it speaks to a larger problem they're not seeing that that way and it's the culture and the years of indoctrination that have been sadly a part of that, where they think that that's a normal thing to think. And that's what, that's what frightens me. Yeah, I agree. I think the other thing is the dichotomy of our federal mm-hmm. government. You can get in trouble if you don't go to prenatal care. Yeah. 
<laughs> but you could turn around and you could wait until the last moment and say, oh, go ahead and just destroy my child. And that's you know, a scary just, thing. In yeah. certain states, the, the right to abort your child goes up literally to the day of birth. I mean, yeah. it, it's frightening. Even people who were pro-choice back in the day, who would who would like like back in like the 90s or the 80s, even those people back then would say partial birth abortion or abortion up until the day of birth is just insane. It's wrong. I mean, it, it's, you know, for obvious reasons. And it's sad that we've gotten to that point where you know, under certain states, I'll, I'll give one state in particular as an example, Illinois. You know, you can abort your baby up until the day of birth. I don't know about you. That scares the, you know, what? I know. Yeah, it does. And, you know, it just such a, it, I'll, I'll be honest with you. If I was, uh, if I committed a manslaughter, had a manslaughter charge against me where I killed a woman in her unborn child sure. in her womb in a car accident. And I it's still legally time, recognizable. Yeah, I would, I would turn around and say, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. excuse me, but take sure. one of those murder charges off because you, the federal government, says you can kill them anytime. You know, yeah. so, and I think that's, a, that's a good thing about what the Dobbs decision did. It took that whole cloth right to an abortion that was literally invented by the Supreme Court back in 1973 and really just put it, the issue back where it belongs in the states. Mm -hmm. It was always a state issue before that. You had some states that were more lax and more um, lenient and others that were more conservative and more restrictive but it was always considered a state issue what the Dobbs decision did just gave everybody back that level playing field if you're still of that persuasion there are places where you can still do it but in some states they have seen that they're pro-life states they believe that life begins and you have to protect the unborn now obviously all the states have different things about uh rape and incest life of the mother and stuff like that that's a policy issue that can be had at another day. But the whole thing that the Dobbs decision did, and, and it was a masterstroke, is that it's it just erased that wrong that Supreme the Supreme Court did back in 1973. They created this right to an abortion, no questions asked, literally out of whole cloth that if you ask anybody to read the Constitution, they can't find anywhere where it says you have a right to an abortion because it doesn't exist. And this, this decision just corrected that that wrong, in my opinion. I agree with you, and that's probably the greatest segue we can have into yep. March for Life, because yes. now it is a state issue. Yeah, let's talk about uh, more pleasant things like the March for Life. That's going to be uh, September 23rd, as we know, uh, two weeks from yesterday. It's coming up fast. And it this, the, the schedule this year is pretty similar to as it's been in previous years, so I'll just give a quick rundown on that. Uh, the general schedule is that Monday morning, 930, we have mass celebrated by Bishop uh, Timothy Sr. of Harrisburg. The homeless for that mass is going to be uh, Auxiliary Bishop Waldersheed of uh, uh, Pittsburgh, and he's going to give the homily for that mass. Now, at, at after the mass, we're going to have all the signs ready for everybody to take to the march, which is literally right up the street from the cathedral. So at uh, 10 o'clock, we're going to have basically our marshal's huddle. Any Knight of Columbus that's coming that wants to serve as a marshal for the parade route, we'll just meet real quick. We'll give uh, guys their vests, and we'll just tell them where we need them to stand on the parade route, where they give uh, aid uh, to people if they need first aid or if they need to know where the, the restrooms are, you know, things like that. That's normally what the March for Life organization asks us to do. They ask us to serve as marshals for the parade. So at 11 o'clock, we had the rally. That's right in front of the Capitol, right on 3rd Street there. You won't be able to miss it. This stage is huge. And this year, our keynote speaker is Mark Halk. You may remember him from all his legal issues that he had run afoul of the law when he was trying to protest at an abortion clinic. Now, it's my understanding he has sent one an appeal on that, and he's fighting back. He's, he's fighting back using both the courts and public opinion to give his side of the story and give our pro-life side of the story. So he should be a very um, uh, interesting speaker at the rally. That'll be at 11 o'clock. <clears throat> After the rally, right around 12 o'clock, that's when the march begins. It'll go around the, the Capitol grounds. It's about, I think about a little bit over a mile altogether. It's like you're basically just going around the Capitol grounds down in Harrisburg. It's not too long. And then um, at one o'clock on the Capitol steps, we'll have silent no more. That is the group of people who shared our testimonials of 
uh, having uh, gone through the, the pain of abortion in the past and how it affected their life and how hopefully how it changed their life. So we'll be having those testimonials on the Capitol steps. And then at 1.30, we have our second Mass of the day at St. Patrick's Cathedral. That'll be celebrated by Archbishop Nelson Perez of Philadelphia. And the homilist for that Mass will be Bishop Bambara of, I believe, Scranton. So I know I was talking with Brian Halleck. He, we, they, he has a lot of uh, knights uh, coming down from the Scranton area to to want to hear their bishop at the mass, and then too just to be part of the day's festivities. So that's the general rundown. Now we have a, we have a couple new uh, new improved um, additions to the uh, festivities this year. The the Sunday before uh, September twenty second. At 7 o'clock p.m., there is going to be a prayer service at the cathedral, St. Patrick's Cathedral, right on State Street there in Harrisburg. And after that prayer service for the Sanctity of Life, they're going to have an all-night adoration of the Blessed Sacrament at the cathedral. So if anybody is a raging insomniac or if they're, they want to come down, they can come down any time overnight. The, the cathedral will be open all night for adoration. I believe the cathedral's website has a place where you can sign up to uh, be a be a watcher for any hour and you can do that on your own but the, that monday morning at nine o'clock they will have a final benediction and then that'll lead right into the nine thirty mass on monday morning so this is a new event that they haven't had this before they're, they're having it new this year to kind of give more um action to the uh, festivities this year and then another quick thing is that there will be actually a latin mass too at nine thirty. now I'm a little reluctant to talk about this because I just found out about it late last week. But uh, St. Lawrence, right down the street, uh, they're the Modern Day Society. They're going to have a Latin Mass for for the same reason for for a sanctity of life. But if you're of that persuasion, you know you might you might feel comfortable going to that Mass. But I'm encouraging everybody to go to the regular Mass at the cathedral at nine thirty because Bishop Senior will be there. All the bishops and all the prelates and everybody who is going to be part of the march will be at that mass. So you know, it gives everybody a choice, but I'm hoping everybody you know sticks to the, the main schedule. And uh, that's pretty much it. I have a couple like uh, just a couple like uh, kind of checklist notes. I talked about the signs. We'll have signs right outside. Um, we're going to have like a membership table right outside the cathedral. Uh, hopefully we'll get new knights that day, too. But right there, that's basically our base of operations. We'll be handing out the signs for everybody at their mass. We'll have plenty of them, but like I said, if we, if we run out, that's a great problem to have. I'm not, I don't mind that at all. David? And, yes, sir. Uh, I don't mean to cut you off, but we're up not at the clock. we got to do a hard break. We're coming up on the end of the uh, first segment of Night Talk, <laughs> and we'll be back right after these messages. And welcome back to Night Talk. I'm Joe Murphy, and I'm joined for this afternoon show by uh, Mikey Kubik, my usual co-host. And uh, we have been discussing the upcoming March for Life in Harrisburg. And uh, David, if you want to pick up where you left off there, yes. we can uh, give them the date and times again, maybe, and then sure, uh, no go into the rest of it. Okay. Yeah, I'll give like, a real quick rundown of, of the uh, schedule. It's Monday, September 23rd, 930 Mass, uh, uh, presided by Bishop Senior. Uh, 10 o'clock, uh, 11 o'clock rally, 12 o'clock March, 1.30 Mass uh, celebrated by Archbishop Perez of Philadelphia. And and the night before, we will have a prayer service at 7 o'clock, and then we'll have an overnight adoration of the Blessed Sacrament until 9 o'clock that Monday morning, a 9 o'clock benediction, which leads into the 9.30 Mass. So hopefully that gets everybody uh, quickly on the same page. Uh, we'll have signs for everybody after the 9.30 Mass. Uh, we're, we're bringing a whole bunch of them and hopefully we'll get rid of them, which will be great. And that means everybody's there for the, the rally. Uh, we'll be having a, a, a membership table uh, spawn, um, headed up by our regional uh, membership director, Mike Kowalski, and our state membership director. They're going to uh, handle that part. And then um, that'll be basically our base of operations. So if you're a Knight of Columbus and you're coming to the march that day, that's where our basic quote unquote headquarters will be if you need any information or anything like that. Uh, I've reached out to the color court. They should be um, uh, uh, showing up for the masses. They they know all about the schedule. Um, I believe our state deputy and our state chaplain will be invited onto the stage as one of the uh, participating organizations. A quick note about that. The Pennsylvania March for Life is its own organization. We're a part of it. We're like a voice and a chorus for it. So we just uh, basically help out and everything like that. We provide the marshals for the parade. And then... Um, 
I believe that's pretty much uh, everything I needed to uh, say. Um, if if you did, if you're driving a bus for it, uh, there will be a packet sent out with the information. Um, just uh, going over my notes here, just to see if I missed anything. But I think we're good. Um, we're ready to go, and I'm looking forward to seeing everybody there on the 23rd. Dave, I have a question. I don't know if you'll sure. be able to answer this or not. Um, okay, I'll try. The, what is the um, abortion policy within the state of Pennsylvania? As far as I know, it's permitted up until a certain time. I, I, I don't know the, the, the nuts and bolts of how long that they have. I, it might be first trimester. Don't quote me mm -hmm. on that because I, I'm really not sure. Uh, I know it's a big issue in Pennsylvania now, especially because of the Dobbs decision. So, and the, this year's elections are obviously going to be a big part of how we go forward, you know, which way we go, that, that, that'll be a large determinant. I know it's, it's it, just speaking off the political, just, just as if you talk to people on the street in Pennsylvania, I know Pennsylvania is still pretty widely divided over the issue, but I think more people in Pennsylvania are pro-life than pro-choice. I think we're starting to change some minds and hearts. At least I hope we are. And I, 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 I believe that. I really think we are with these marches and with just the constant exhortation of what our side is about, what we believe. I think that's what's changing the hearts and minds. It, we, it, it's a matter of faith for a lot of us. And when I think something is a matter of faith for somebody in a public policies uh, square, I think that really helps. At least I hope but, it does. You know what, David? If mm -hmm. nothing else, if you're a church-going, God-fearing Christian, not necessarily Catholic, just to mm -hmm. use the term Christian, oh yeah, and you read your Bible and you know what the Ten Commandments are, Mm -hmm. The fifth commandment of God says, "Thou shalt not kill." In exactly. my mind, that's game set match right yep. there. Oh yeah, and that's, and that's where it should be. And sure. luckily, we're part of like a lot of these people that are organizations that are coming to the march. A lot of them aren't Catholic; they're they're Protestant, they're Jewish, yes. they're they're non denominational, but they all share that pro life fervor that we have. Um, a, a, just a quick uh, example of a gentleman who's worked with us. Um, many times in the past, Michael Gear, He is the president of the Pennsylvania Family uh, Council on the Fa Family Institute. Um, he's an evangelical. But every time he has an event, any kind of pro-life event that I'm attending or anything like that, without fail, he always invites me on the stage. And he always asks me, he always asks for the Catholic perspective of our pro-life issues. And most of the time, they're, they're, they, they melt pretty well because we're all pretty much on the same page. But it's great to have that working relationship with them because they're just as pro-life as we are. Yes, exactly. And you know, the more we get, the more troops we gather, for lack of a better term, there's mm -hmm. a lot of people, a lot of good Christians out there that believe as yep. we do. I believe, yep, I, I agree. Well, with, I, I believe that too. Yeah, and I think we're even above Christianity here. I really do, because of the fact that I think what Dave said in the beginning was humanity. I, I, I think that there's a there's an inherent desire for life. I mean, if you ever see anybody that has a problem, whether it be cancer or heart disease or anything, you struggle to fight as hard as you can to yeah. keep your life. Yeah. And it's no different. Human nature. Yeah, it's the baby in the womb is no mm -hmm. different. And I think that extends beyond all religions. I mean, I can't, I think if you're a human being and you, you have to be a little callous to think that your life is more important than any other life. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things that I feel so sorry for some of these women that, you know, that, that they're carrying a life within them. And yet their life is, and, and, and I guess, as we get down to it, you're not even talking about their life. It's their livelihood. It's what they sure. want to do. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's one of the things that I hate it most about Roe v. Wade is I, I saw a young lady on TV and she had, she was bragging about her 15th abortion. Oh. That's contraception. I mean, that's yeah. basically what she is doing is, is that I'm if I conceive, all right, no problem, I'll just kill her. Uh, my child, and uh, and that's scary. I mean, that that's above, that's sure. beyond what we were talking about is the humanity aspect. That is not humane. I mean, there's no. there's a problem with that. And and the, the, I'll turn it around and give a good a good point of that is that our ASAP program with the Knights of Columbus, mm -hmm. Aided Support After Pregnancy, where 
it, it dispels the myth. And this is something I hear all the time. And I'm sure others have as well. When somebody comes up to you and says, oh, okay, yeah, you're pro-life, but you're only pro-life as long as that baby is in the womb. And once it's born, you kind of abandon it. And, and it really hurts me when they say that because one, it's not true. And two, it's completely misinformed. What we do with the ASAP program is, as you know, is we give both material and mental spiritual comfort to those who are in this position we we give them like solid advice we give them the help that they need that way when they do bring that child into the world that's not the end of it we're helping them and they're for the uh, obviously in the first like basically in the first year of life with things like diapers baby formula baby needs and stuff like that blankets you, you name it but it's great that I think that the Knights of Columbus has that program because not only it does this dispels the myth, it just buttresses our pro-life stance that we are pro-life from natural conception to natural death. So any point in between that is still life. That is still God. That is still sacred it is still God given. It's still his handiwork. And it's up to us to help anybody who needs that kind of help to, to keep life going. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. I think it was one of the best programs that came out. Oh, it's a great the program. thing is, I think our councils and our, our Christian community was always doing that. Mm -hmm. It's just that we yeah, never... Unofficially, yeah. Had, yeah, we never had a name for it. We never had a, mm -hmm. a conduit to actually say, oh, well, here, you can go to this right. and get the assistance you need. But I know of uh, many uh, young girls that uh, found themselves in a in a situation that they weren't really expecting. And if they went to the parish priest, everything was handled above board quietly, and they yeah. were given assistance. And uh, you know right. that's always been going on. So, and not just again, not just the parish priest, ministers, and and uh, rabbis, and everybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've always been there, but I think the ASAP program is one that uh, brought it to life. No different yeah. than Lord's House. Sure, uh, you exactly. Know, Lord's House is a great part. example. Yeah. Uh, I think the other one, you know, even New Hope Ministries, all of these things will help out mm -hmm. those individuals in need, no matter what the need is. Right. And, and I've always said that the two things that I look at from uh, the Knights of Columbus is uh, pro-life and that all aspect of life. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is solidarity with our priests and bishops. Okay. And I think that's really our two big issues that we do. And speaking That's of solidarity, Joseph. I better see a bunch yeah. of priests and bishops at the march on the twentieth. <laughs> we, we do. We, we we see them all. We see the seminarians. Yeah, they always do. Um, no, Father, Father Spitel is always there. Father Sawicki. I mean, all, all our friends from the priesthood and everything, and Bishop Senior is obviously there. I, it's always great to see him. And um, I think it, it, just a little thing, like you know, Bishop Senior is our new bishop here in Harrisburg. Last year, I got a chance to talk to him for a few minutes before the rally began. And both he and I were standing together and we're, what, we're, we're like doing a panoramic view of the Capitol steps. And it's people far as the eye can see with signs, with banners, um, our, our, my, my modern day boys, um, I'm their district deputy. They have a big um, little baldacchino with uh, the Blessed Mother that they carry around. I mean, they go all in for it. And it's just great to see, and young and old, black and white, everybody there as being for the sanctity of life. And we were just marveling. Over it. We're just like, there are so many people here. And it's just fantastic. It just shows that we're strong, we're united, and we're, we're getting the word out about how thing, how the pro-life message is the right message. And it was just great to see that from Bishop Senior as our new bishop. And it got him more acclimated to Harrisburg. And I've met with him a couple of times and saying, and he's, he he always tells me whatever you need from our priests, let me know. And it's great. We have such a great working relationship with the diocese now. And now when we have for a long time, but even now more, even when you have a new bishop taking over, you always gotta you always gotta wonder, is this guy gonna be pro Knights of Columbus? Is he gonna help us? Bishop Senior's been absolutely fantastic. I'm I'm really glad he's here. There you go. And you know what else with all the other stuff, the ASAP and all that stuff, the amount of ultrasound yes machine so we have put in various facilities in and around yeah. the harrisburg area and the Another common program world. yeah it, it, it's working we know it's doing good we know sure it's doing do. good because all you have to do yeah. is talk to the people that are using the machines that's right well i think one of the things that was so is so good about the uh 
ultrasound machines is it's like the story about the uh, hitting the guy in the head with the two by four because when you <laughs> see the baby you cannot i mean there there's no oh. way you can say that isn't a, a human being i it think that is you fundamentally yeah it, it does i mean i don't care who you are but when you see the little fingers and the little toes i mean i don't know how you can say well no no that's that's just you know a blob, a blob of what? Fingers, toes, and a heart. Yeah, it's not going to be a toaster yeah, or something. Makes... It's going to be a human life. I mean, yeah, it's, it's really so good. We're getting down to the end, and I okay. can see Joe's ready to do it. Dave, thank you so much for coming. We thank do you. Thanks for having me on the show. That you, do. Um, you know, I think it's one of the most important things in our state is a uh, life director. And, and uh, I think life is what it's all about. And I know you're there with. Uh, Everybody working hard at this. So, De yeah. Joseph. All righty. We're just about up against the clock again there. We did good. Uh, David, thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me on. Uh, uh, so, well, along with uh, Dave, our guest Dave Bloomer and Mikey Kubik, I'm Joe Murphy. Thank you for listening. Stay safe out there, and God bless.